Ciao everyone, today we're going to talk about the Waves Magma Tube Channel Strip. The Magma Tube Channel Strip is a brand new plugin that was recently released by Waves. Um, they did a phenomenal job in creating a channel strip that emulates the sounding characteristic of actually two bass mixing consoles. Now, the thing I love the most about this plugin is the way that this reacts to sounds. As a matter of fact, like a true mixing console, it adds a lot of very interesting characteristics to the overall tonal shape of sounds. No matter if you're working on EDM, rock, pop, bluegrass, jazz, this channel strip is incredibly versatile and very musical as it can feel you know every single sound feels very glued very cohesive at the same time though they added a very specific feature that allows you to bring and squash the living life out of every sound and yet keeping it very musical so if you're wondering what is this plugin really good at so this channel strip really excels in shaping the tonal and dynamic quality of our tracks, no matter what it is that you're working on. You know, you can get from very, very subtle to an extreme settings to a very interesting effect of pumping and breathing with this plugin, and yet emulating very and thoroughly the analog characteristic of old analog consoles. Now, without any further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at the channel strip. The actual channel strip consists of a preamp section that adds a very, very rich harmonic content. And we can actually manipulate the amount of drive. And we have an actual LED up here that lights up in green or red, depending if we are accessing or stressing this preamp section uh, quite a lot. Now, this by itself is the real money. The amount of subtle or very brutal harmonic distortion you can get out of this section over here, it's simply incredible. Now, along with that, within the drive section, we have a phase inverter, as well as two different high pass filter. One fixed at 60 Hertz, the other one fixed at 110 Hertz. Right below, we have a three band EQ for a bit more tonal shaping, if you may. As you can see, the bass and the highs are fixed whereas the mids allow us to go from 100 hertz to up to 5,000 hertz. Of course, every time you modify anything, if you hold down option and click on the parameter, that parameter will actually reset. Down below, we have our dynamic section. Now, the dynamic section feature two knobs, an expander or a gate, depending what is that we're doing, and a compressor section. Now the single knob compressor has as well a toggle down here, which feature the smash toggle. Now the smash, in fact, pushes this compressor to an extreme. A little bit, I would say, has a, you know, a, a British mode or a nuke mode on a distressor. Along the line, you have a variable volume adjuster. For this example, we're gonna analyze how the tube channel strip actually works on a song I get the pleasure to produce and record last year for an artist named Mary Collins and her brand new EP. Please go ahead and support this incredible artist. I'm gonna give you a little sneak peek of the song and then we're gonna dive in on how this incredible plugin works. The song is called Bright New Day by Mary Collins. Won't lead to a bright This song is part of her brand new EP, and this song is called Bright New Day. Uh, it's a very organic song. Everything was recorded at the same time, zero overdubs. Uh, right now, I want to just let you give you a little glimpse of the song without vocals and without the actual channel strip.
as you can see, the song gets very organic. Everything sounds very smooth and very glued together due to the fact that the musicians were incredible and the song is extremely beautiful and well performed. So the first thing I'm going to do actually is playing for you a before and after the Magma Channel Strip. So as you can see over here in the last insert of my first five slots, I've inserted a section of Magma Channel Strip for all my drums, my bass, my guitars, and as well for my vocals. I'm going to play first without and then with. Focus on how well this plugin allows me to glue together all these different elements. We have a very interesting, you know, uh, back and forth between the way that the bass is playing and the way that the drums are performing, as well as this guitar, which is being finger picked with a lot of delay. So, focus what happened when I engaged the channel strip on. So you hear how the overall stereo imaging just got wider. We acquire way more depth within the channel strip. The guitars just glue together with the bass, which is actually gluing with the drums, which especially with percussion, I love what the actual drive and the, the actual preamplifier section does, has it push all the nasty digital artifacts back and kind of like rounds up a bit more the sound of our drums. Again, I'm going to replay the song uh, a little bit closer to where, where the dynamics rise up. So without and then with. <laughs> an incredible sense of depth. Now, let's see what is that I did on each single track. I'm gonna start by soloing our drums. So, drums before. After. You hear how all of a sudden when the plugin is in, the kick drum, the snare drum, kind of like find their own pocket. But what's even more interesting is how all the ambience and room microphone kind of like gets pushed back, embracing this very uh, punchier transient of the kick drum and the snare drum, creating a sort of like room, like a really excel this plugin and enhancing the space in which this microphone has been positioned. Um, let's go ahead and listen what our kick drum it's doing. So right now we have a sub kick and a kick drum. Let's start with the sub first. So very dull, very kind of like lifeless. Um, as you can see here, the only thing that I've done with this channel strip was not using the EQ, but rather the harmonic section of the preamplifier. You hear how it rounds up. Just incredible.
And again, with the expander, um, I've kind of, with the gate, sorry guys, I've kind of like, Tighten it up a little bit, the performance. Same thing for the kick drum. Actually, the kick drum. Was a little bit too clicky. So on this kick drum, I compressed it at a bit, a bit of mesh just to add a bit more pumping and breathing. I have gated a bit of the bleeding from the snare drum. But what I had a lot of fun was the tonal shaping of it, where I actually removed a lot of the highs and add just a tiny bit of 2K and lots of bass with a filter at 60 hertz and my drive or my preamplifier section push up to 73. So again, it sounds a little bit clickier, but in context with the sub kick and the cymbals. Without. Very dull. Same thing for my three snare drums. Now, my three snare drums have been treated in the exact same way. So as you can see here, just a little bit of compression and a lot of drive which you would be surprised to hear how big of a difference this does on an instrument such as snare drum. So again, listen and focus on the overall tonal shape of this instrument without and then with again. It's not just the volume, it's how this specifically the drive section reshape the overall texture of an instrument. Moving quick on our overhead, again, as you can see, I've reshaped it a little bit, compressed it, and actually hyper-compressed a little bit with the squash. You hear the actual, how the overheads kind of like acquire more, more height, if you may. It just sounds less harsh and more, oh, I have this beautiful sizzling of overheads above my head. Lastly, our drums have our made inside, which sounds something like this for our rooms. Again, I think on the rooms, this plugin does a phenomenal job because it adds a three-dimensionality, so it adds a little bit more depth, but yet it brings forward all these elements that we want to hear, so a bit more the sustain for the kick drum, a little bit more the snare. Also, with the cymbal, does an incredible job in, since I'm using a lot of compression here, although the LED doesn't look like it, it doesn't squash the cymbal to the point that they become too harsh. So again, I'm going to be playing you the drums with and without all over again. Let's do actually without first and then with. Yeah. 
Incredible. Truly incredible. Now, the cool thing is, as I said before, if I get something like our snare drum, if I want, I could actually engage the compressor and squash the living life out of this instrument to see how the characteristic of this plugin acts. So out of one track, the snare drum, I was able to recreate a room track, which is insane if you think about it. So I'm gonna let you hear before and then after I applied a lot of compression apparently and engaged the squash knob. Uh, of course, I've reduced a little bit of height so that we can introduce a bit more distance from our source. And why not filtering a 60? So without and then with. So what I did through this plugin is, yes, compressing the living life out of the snare drum, but what this plugin does, thanks to its drive and preamplification section and this incredible compressor mounted on it, it add me to reshape the overall tonal characteristic of one instrument and create a different sound. For instance, we have a room microphone. So let's see how this is going to work in context with the rest of the drums. I'm just going to open hats and just one of the snare drum. So remember, this snare drum over here is the one that holds the hyper compressed version of the signal. I mean, who needs room microphones anymore, right? Uh, you could really do anything with this plugin. I will just remove this for a tiny bit and moving on my bass. Now the bass over here, I had a DI and a cabinet. Of course, they've been treated differently. So let's actually go ahead and listen only to the bass. Very nasally, but yet very interesting texture. Let's see what this plugin add on top of this bass performance. So focus on the tip of the bass. So not a lot of the on the low end, which is going to be addressed by our cabinet, but primarily on the how the the actual notes move along the fret. When this plugin is engaged with the drive at 12 o'clock and a little bit of EQ, so a shelving filter, uh, actually 2 dB of highs, and a 108 3 dB. Listen to the texture of the fret of the bass. just adds a farther definition to this performance, evening up also the differences between low notes and very high notes. Moving along on our cabinet, very similar treatment. I love how I am stressing the bass in the lower part of its spectrum, and yet we don't hear distortion 
actually we hear a rounder, beefier and deeper bass, which actually mangles really, really well with our fret. You hear how without the plug-in, the bass actually sounds a little bit too thin. Like on the longer note, boom, ba -da boom, ba -da boom full ba -da -ba 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 -da. a lot of definition on the notes let's see how this blends in with our drums so drum and bass without our magma challenge strip and then with I really love the sense of tightness that this plugin adds on my drums. As far as the guitar goes, we have two finger picked guitars. And you can hear a little bit of the bleeding of the bass. Right? So let's see, what I did was just enhancing a bit more the sizzling of this delay that was recorded through the guitar player's pedals. Like in this case, I hear more depth, more space. I have removed that very honky sound from the actual guitar, having these instruments really cutting through the mix. Last but not least, I think to be fair, we should hear Mary's vocals, which perform marvelously. So this is her vocals without anything. And I forgot to mention that what we heard so far is the actual raw take. Nothing has been mixed. So the only thing we're doing here, it's listening to what these magma tube channel strip is actually doing. With. There could be a brand new day. So we get all that incredibly nice sizzling of vocals, that very top hand, although it's not raw and it's not harsh, it's very, very musical and very, very open. So I'm going to let you hear the whole without the magma and then with. Intention won't lead to a Intention won't lead to a Now, just to add an extra cherry on top of the cake, on my master bus, I have a BB Tubes Magma. Listen how the channel strip plus the BB Tube completely reshaped the sound of this song even before getting mixed. So this is without the BB Tube. Won't lead 
This is with. Intention won't lead to a bright new day. Right beyond the life I always swore I'd read. There could be a bright new day. Somewhere where I'm holding on to what I So as you can see, just using these two plugins, one in conjunction of another, can reshape the overall tone of a mix. But not only that, if you consider this, the song hasn't been mixed. The only thing I did was just playing a little bit with the harmonic saturation I can get out of the drive part of this channel strip, as well as just reshaping it here and there with a little bit of EQ. So think about how powerful and musical this plugin is. Now, if you're interested in this plugin, I left a link down in the description. Feel free to check it out and support my friends at Waves. With any other further ado, happy mixing.